perfected faces done by the you know, best makeup everyone, artist candy do you know the feeling when a football player scores Everything or even just right plays football do you know the feeling when an artist draws or even when she finishes her masterpiece do you know the feeling when they see how much they both accomplish it's called happiness it's what makeup makes me feel makeup is art on your face it enhances your features not hide them unless you want to which is what makes it great i don't see why makeup deserves all this hate wearing makeup isn't about insecurity it's about confidence at least to me simply just applying these beautiful products on my face makes me happy why because that's my kind of masterpiece makeup isn't what makes you feel beautiful it doesn't make me beautiful i know i'm beautiful just like everyone else the face is everything because without it what is makeup the face is like a paper that an artist needs to draw on at the end of the day your face is the reason you're beautiful the sun until the going down of the same continue to be worshippers straight across the cathedral worship him because he's good worship him because he's great worship him because he's healed your body worship him because he saved your soul worship him because he's good worship him because he's faithful worship him because he's consistent this God we serve he is well and well able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think can we give him praise God we bless you and we thank you come on let's get it going we give him all the praise can you clap your hands together come on Lord, I lift your name on high. hope of glory oh glory hallelujah ah just give him the praise today for his goodness for his mercy for his loving kindness give him the praise because he is still answering the questions of doubt and fear give him the praise because the cross it still has its power give him the praise because the blood can still wash us white as snow give him the praise because the scars in his hand reminds him of his love towards us give him the praise because he is god and god alone all by himself give him the praise because there is no man i don't care how smart or how brilliant can change what god oh glory hallelujah is doing in this world no one can change it he is able to do it he is able to turn it around he is able to uproot and destroy oh glory be to god i want you to know that he is still with us don't lose focus it's about jesus and so you have, you have made him secondary it's about time that you put him in front and make everything else second to him he's still saying oh glory be to god seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all things will be added oh god but we are trying to add and then seek but it won't work god wants us to seek him and that is why there's great disappointment there's great hurt there's great pain for what we have gone through because we have not seek him the way we ought to he is calling us to seek him 
seek him turn oh glory hallelujah from our ways and come back to the God of creation he created all things the Bible says for himself he created it so he is in control of it oh God he is good and worthy of all praise you pray my strength in the Lord Today, I can tell you there is a healing in this house. From your step on into these doors, there is a healing in this place. Healing in our bodies, healing in our minds, healing in our soul, healing in our spirits. Lord, send your, send your healing. As a matter of fact, from before the service actually started, I kept hearing God said, I'm going to heal today. She would normally have seizures, and the seizures would actually have her in a disoriented and an unconscious state. But the day the enemy would not magnify himself in the presence of God. Because healing is in the house. It doesn't matter what type of sickness it is. It doesn't matter what kind of oppression, depression, suppression, and even possession God is able today. And in that word from the Gospel according to St. John's, their problem was not that they didn't hear or understood Jesus. That was not their problem. Their problem was they wanted to hear what they wanted to hear. So when Jesus told them, I must go to Jerusalem to suffer many things of those elders, those high priests, and be delivered unto them, and I would die and I'll rose again the third day, they hear none of that. All they really heard is, you can't go to suffer and die. Peter spoke out and said, if all men forsake you, I will be right there with you. Pass my sword. And Peter stood up with his sword and said, if anybody came close to Jesus, what he would do. But the Lord told him, put that up. If you live by the sword, you die by the sword. They never understood what Jesus was all about. Jesus didn't come to change the government. Anytime you see a man or woman of God come and they say they want to change the government, they don't understand Jesus. Jesus never came to change their government nor their governance. What Jesus came to do is establish another kingdom which is not of this world. Lift your hands for Jesus. Jesus said that any man will forsake himself, deny himself, take up your cross and follow me. You're ready for the kingdom. Jesus said 
Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So you could never see kingdom principles. You can never understand kingdom principles. You can never partake in uh, 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 that kind of principle, spiritual principle, kingdom principles, until you accept Jesus. So the thing they saw was natural kingdom. And every time they spoke to Jesus, they was talking about natural concerns. And this is why when the woman with the issue of blood touched Jesus, and Jesus turned around and said, who touched me? The disciples said, how can you ask who touch you and everybody around you touching you? Jesus said, hold on, you still haven't gotten it yet. How long have I been with you? And you still don't know that there is somebody among you touch me by faith. Give God a shout of praise. There are folk in this place today. They didn't come to be thrilled. They didn't come to be excited. They didn't come just to be mesmerized. But they came to feel and receive that heavenly prize. Give God a shout of praise. When you come to Jesus, Jesus is not about things. Gentleman came to follow Jesus. Say, Lord, I want to go with you. Jesus says, the fox of hole, the birds of nest, but the Son of Man had not where to lay his head. Watch Jesus. Jesus never said, I don't have nowhere to lay my head. He didn't say that. He said, I have not where to lay my head. What Jesus was saying, <laughs> it's amazing, wave your hands for God. The meat of this word today is that the kingdom of God is not meat, it is not drink, but it is joy, peace, tranquility, power in the Holy Ghost. So today, this is powerful. This is awesome. Love it, praise and worshipers. Today you are here. And you are just tired of just being tired. As I, as I, as I hear God today, God said, sickness infirmities diseases shortcomings lacks needs frustrations anxieties even perplexities I bombarded my children right left and center because they have not yet learned how to put their trust in God Jesus said, except you do what I said, you cannot even see the kingdom of God. What was Jesus saying? Jesus was saying, every kingdom have principles. You live in this natural, you're trying to apply natural principles to a spiritual realm, to a spiritual world. He said, you miss me for every time. And this is why when they brought persons to them to be healed, they do nothing with them. Jesus said, bring them to me. Today, what a setting. Prison worship, take it. There is a bomb in Gilead that can heal even the sin sick soul. Everybody just wave your hands. Yes. Healing today. Hallelujah. Whatever you need to be covered in today, 
It's here for you too. Do it for us today.